Hi, I'm Jordan Laurel, and welcome to my show where we make the human experience magical through mental health, mindset, and manifestation. My story is one of radical transformation and rebirth. From depressed, disempowered, and dependent to flourishing within an incredible life I've created, this podcast is me sharing my process of overcoming and creating a magical human experience to help support you as you do the same. Tune in every Monday to feel empowered through stories, wisdom, and lots of super practical tips. Because I am proof, you can change your entire life and manifest a life beyond your wildest dreams. Welcome to the Magical Human Experience Podcast. Welcome back to the podcast, friends. I am amused slash annoyed at my podcast setup right now. If you could see the contraption I have happening right now or just crazy setup to get enough light because the window is not providing enough light because it's dark and rainy and gloomy in New York right now. So I'm using my Alex Earl light, which I was informed by two vloggers, well, Delaney actually from last week's episode and one of our mutual friends that Alex Earl did not indeed come up with that light. She did not make it popular. It was popular before her. So I was corrected, but I guess everybody knows it as the Alex or a light. If you don't have this light, by the way, and you create any kind of content, or even just if you're on Zoom a lot, it makes such a difference. It just, it also makes you look like filtered and your skin look amazing. And it is a great light, but it helps so much with content, making it look clear and professional. And so I have it hooked up, but it needs to be plugged in because I feel like it'll die if I have it on for, I'll probably end up talking for at least a half hour here and we don't want it to die so i have it plugged in but then the like cable is pulling it to the side and it's clipped onto a wine glass and like keeping that upright like it's just been a whole thing <laughs> but we're here i'm here and i'm just gonna go ahead and make the alex earl light this week's magic of the week because it is literally it literally is such a game changer in terms of any kind of video or photo content so i'm here to chat and share some things that i think will be empowering and helpful for you because i realized that they're actually really empowering and helpful for me when it comes to manifestation i'm sharing just a few things that have helped me manifest better practical things that i do consistently that i've noticed just really help keep me in a really good energy and just in that flow of i honestly like i put the intentions out there and the things just come and other good things that I've never thought of. Like I feel in such a flow with manifestation as I've shared quite a bit over the last few months, honestly, because I felt that way, but it just, it's really cool. And it's not like you just get anything you want and like the universe is a genie or anything, but it's very, very interesting when you look and you see what you've manifested and you're like, oh, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> like this is working, this is exciting, this is fun. And yeah, so that's kind of today's topic. I hope it's very practical and helpful. Speaking of a little housekeeping, some things that I need to be better at mentioning more regularly. Number one, please, if you have time and capacity and would like to help a girl out, please, it would, I would be so grateful and appreciative if you could rate and review the podcast. It helps podcasters so much. There's no like algorithm like YouTube or TikTok or Instagram. So ratings and reviews really help people find my podcast or anybody's podcast. If you do have a moment, it doesn't have to be long or profound or whatever, unless you want it to be, then please go for it. I would love that. I would love any and all feedback from you guys. That was the next thing, but for rating and reviews, I would, would really love if you are able to obviously hit the follow. I don't think it's the subscribe button. I think it's just a follow button so you don't miss any episodes. And then also if you, I would love feedback from you guys because I'm sharing several different types of podcasts. They're different vibes and forms. And I'm curious what you guys are loving the most. Like the numbers tell me a little bit, but really not enough for me to make sure I am serving you as well as I can. So I would really love to know I'm obviously doing these solo episodes that are very manifestation mindset focused. And then I do some that are a bit more like wellness lifestyle focused. And then I've been having experts on from brands or just like businesses that I love and have partnered with or just wear their stuff, use their stuff, sharing like expert advice. Then I've also had like colleagues and friends on to share wisdom and their inspirational stories and practical tips and stuff. And so I'm just curious, like, and if you like all of it, we can keep doing all of it. But I just wanted to get some feedback from you guys and see what you're enjoying the most and just make sure I am, yeah, serving you guys with this podcast because that is the goal. And I obviously tune into 
what I am feeling led to do and what is lighting me up. But I also just really want to have that to consider what serves you guys the most because sometimes all, all of them light me up and I feel like are helpful. And so I want to know what's most helpful for you. Okay, diving into the content for today. First on my list, and I got inspired to actually do this episode. I was going to do a completely different episode, but I shared some on stories and I was like, ooh, this is really good. Like, I need to dive more into some of these practical things that are helping me with manifestation. And the first one is to write out what you want to manifest and what you have manifested. Keep track of every single month. And you know what, guys, sometimes I, and this is going to come up later in this episode, sometimes I, I forget things or I miss things or I'm not as consistent as I would like to be. And it doesn't really matter that much or as much as we often make it mean. So I just want to throw that out there. But I almost every single month and sometimes oftentimes multiple times throughout the month will look at and write out what I want to manifest. Sometimes it's not neatly, perfectly in my notes app. Sometimes it's just in my journal throughout the month. I realign with what do I want? What am I calling in in the next month? But I typically every month have like January, February, March, and like a list with the little bullet circle things that you can like check off in the notes app because it's really fun to then check back in and like check things off and be like, ooh, I'm manifesting a lot. Or things are coming in quickly. And, and then I also have a separate list of everything I'm manifesting for each month in the notes app. And I, I like to have both because I think it's so obviously it's important to get clear in the beginning of the month and it's important to get clear in general because as we know manifestation step one clarity get clear and claim it's my step one if you don't know the steps of manifestation and you would like to learn I do have a free pdf where I list them out I also have episode I'll list it in the show notes I think I want to say episode eight no I don't know I'll list it in the show notes I have an episode where I actually talk uh, talk you through the steps of manifestation so I can link that in the show notes but Step one for me is get clear and claim because you need to know what you're calling in to call it in. You have to set that intention out there. That is manifestation. It's all energy, right? But it's heart and brain coherence as Joe Dispenza describes it. It's the intention combined with the emotion that matches the intention. And when they match, you're broadcasting a clear signal into the quantum field. And then you're magnetizing what's aligned with that back to you. So you need the intentions and just the act of putting those intentions out there, especially when you're in good energy. If those intentions are like clearly set within you, that's how you just magnetize and manifest on autopilot. It's so cool. And I feel like that's kind of what I mean by being in flow. I'm constantly getting clear on my intentions and my energy is so good most of the time, especially when I'm enjoying myself and having fun and in pleasure that, that those are like really magnetic vibrations. Cause like those are, the emotions and the vibrations of having what you want being on the other side right why do we want all the things you want the man you want the money because of how you think it's going to make you feel how your life is going to be with those things how is your life going to be with your dream man and your dream bank account well probably pretty fun and flow and you're probably going to be living your best life so doing that now in the present makes you very magnetic especially when you have clearly and you keep getting clear on your intentions. I think it's so important to continually check in and re-clarify because things change. I've been very surprised. I really, um, to be very honest with you guys, I, after my relationship, my, my breakup last winter, I really wanted to call in my life partner. And I was like, I even had a guy ask me this fall. He's like, are you open to having fun and just like enjoying and see where things go? And I was like, no, I am calling in my life partner and I am, <laughs> I've literally told several people recently that I don't want anything serious <laughs> and that I'm loving being single and I'm enjoying my single girl era and having so much fun learning about myself and not being committed and just getting to know people and what I like and how I interact with people. I'd never, I never, ever, ever, ever thought that I would love being single so much and feel so good and stable. Like I feel amazing. And I really thought I needed a man for that. So sometimes what we want changes as we grow and evolve and heal. Of course, what we want's gonna change. And so that was just some, that was a really great example because I don't really life partners out there, but like I'm no longer in a rush. Whereas like it was like top of the list all last summer, all this fall. And then honestly, I think it was doing so much emotional availability work 
that and also just connecting to myself, loving myself, rooting in myself. I started to just feel so stable within myself. I was like, oh, I don't really need this. And I'm actually enjoying being single more. Like, I don't want to be attached to anybody. I want to enjoy the freedom I have right now. Um, really never, ever thought that I would get to that point, but here we are. And so that's why it's so important, like to keep getting clear over and over and over again and consistently and why I keep these lists monthly. And I actually, when I'm being good about it, I edit and check in with my list multiple times a month to check things off because that's really fun and exciting. And we're going to talk about that in a second, but also to, because things shift and sometimes you think you want one thing, but you realize you wanted it for another reason. I go into this in my manifestation coaching a lot and my course, but like so many of us think, oh, okay, I want to manifest, you know, X dollar amount this month. And so I like list out the brands that I want to manifest working with. But sometimes you don't need, I don't need that brand to make that monthly amount. Sometimes you can just have it magnetized to you through random things or through a different stream of income, like whatever it might be. So it's important to not be attached to these specific iterations of things be committed to that monthly income that you want to have come in, be committed to that dream person, but don't be committed to the way you make that money. Don't be committed to the exact person you're on the date with. This is like a whole nother extra freebie that I'm throwing in here in, in, in my first, my first practical thing that I do to manifest better. But honestly, this is like a second one. That's just a freebie. Don't be attached to this specific iteration. I've talked about this before on the podcast though. So I didn't want to make it a whole point. It's can, it's so important to continue to get clear and also to be open. And then when I go back, I'm like, Oh, actually like I didn't even, I manifested what I truly wanted without that specific iteration of it. So that's always really cool to see, but checking in frequently, it allows you to see the way things are flowing to see the way that the universe is bringing you things and how it's always what we want or better. And then I also list out then what I'm calling in each month, because sometimes a lot of the time, actually for me, I'm calling in things without even writing it down or being that cognizant of it. It'll be like a, a, a passing thought that I'll have where I'm like, Ooh, I really want like a designer, a pair of designer shoes or Ooh, I really want to make out with somebody tonight or this week, or, Ooh, I really want to manifest some new shoes, some new, whatever it might be. Ooh, I really want a new face oil. Ooh, I really would love to be on. That was an intention. I said, I'm so excited. I have people who have reached out asking me to be on their podcast recently. And that was something I wrote down for 2024 was I wanted to do a lot more speaking on other people's podcasts for events, for panels, um, just do more of that workshop leading. Like I did when I led that event in, um, the fall with public hotel, I might be organizing, by the way, I actually, again, this is just how things magically just happen. The synchronicity, I got connected to somebody who she and I are going to sit down, but she organizes events to help connect people who want to do good and speak about inspiring topics with just women in New York city. So excited things like always start to fall together, but I'll just think things. Sometimes I don't actively write them down and they come, or there's just random extra magic that the universe is sprinkling into my life through like uh, so much abundance like that just comes through. I got a, a drink ticket and a breakfast ticket for free last night at my hotel. I was like, oh, you know, just asking, not being demanding or whatever. But for some of the hotels that I stay at in New York City, there's a, a service fee. Most of them actually have this. It's like a service resort fee, they call it. I'm like, this is not a resort, but whatever. And but a lot of them or at least several of the ones I've stayed at, I wouldn't I don't want to say a lot of them because I've not stayed at most of the hotels in New York City, but a lot of the ones I've stayed at recently allow you to use that at their bar or restaurant, which is nice. So I'm like, oh, okay, it's a $30 resort fee, but then I get $30 of credit for food and bev at their hotel uh, or their bar or their restaurant or whatever. And so I, I'm like, that's great. But I asked for this hotel and they were like, oh no, we don't really do that. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer. I, that's usually been what's happening, but you know, okay, no worries. And he was like, I got you. Here's a drink voucher. He meant to give me two drink vouchers, but I only needed one glass of wine last night. So I'm glad he only gave me one and then gave me a breakfast one because I got to have a really nice latte and a croissant this morning. And so it's just like things like that, taking the time to write those things down or the way, you know, somebody from an event that I am, I'm networking at that I like, I've been interested in working with the brand. I end up going to their event because I get an invite out of the blue and 
the PR girl ends up networking with me and we have a great conversation and like realize like it's actually so aligned to, to do something together or the way a man will walk up to me and start flirting with me or the way that somebody will reach out and be like, hey, the spring collection of our dresses launched. Do you want one? It's just like the randomest things all not not randomest, obviously, clearly, because they're 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 aligned with where I am going and what I am calling in but you don't realize it like okay i know where i'm going with my career what i'm calling in what i want to be doing the impact i want to have like i'm crystal clear on me in like three to five years <clears throat> but how on earth could we possibly know how we're supposed to get there right from like this person connecting with me in an event and then th well this literally happened i met an amazing girl we had a great conversation at a beauty brand skincare brands dinner like three or four weeks ago and she connected me to this organization that does these events connecting women to the women of new york and like we are probably going to do an event together and then i ended up sat at a dinner last week with somebody who actually did an event with that company and she had the best things to say and we were like maybe we'll do one together like just the way things and like she's gonna come on my podcast the way somebody reached out online and I'm gonna come on their podcast like I could never predict these things and sometimes I get clarity I was like I want to speak on more podcasts this year like that's something I'm gonna manifest but meeting these women connecting to this like to do like I think this the company does a lot of charity events too I could have never like predicted these things or thought of these things but the universe is bringing them because they're part of what I need to have happen to me on my path to where I'm going and because the universe wants to spoil and delight us. Oh my goodness, do I have stuff to talk to you guys about this. I had the most amazing experience on a date. It was very healing. I think I want to process more before I go deep into this because it involves past trauma and um, it's a it can be a heavy sensitive topic so I don't want to dive too much into it but just to summarize, I have never experienced a man so in his healthy masculine and so capable of holding me emotionally. Like I, I've realized this, like this is an area that I am working on with myself personally in terms of dating and intimacy and attracting a life partner whenever that time might be. I, I struggle with control because uh, I've never there's very few people in my life I've actually been fully safe with, especially emotionally. I've never been with men that have been able to caretake for me emotionally. And it's funny because I couldn't caretake for myself emotionally. And I think it's so interesting and so cool that I learned how to truly be emotionally available to myself over this past year, year and a half here. And I truly am capable of holding myself through anything and everything. And I have shown myself that and the trust I have built with myself through doing that is wild. I feel so safe in my experience and in my power, which leads to so much more of a regulated nervous system on the regular, which leads to manifesting like this, just being in this magnetic flow. It truly is manifestation and nervous system regulation. Like all of that stuff is very linked. It's very hard to receive if you are in a and, and to magnetize or manifest from a dysregulated nervous system or that state of being. But I, I think it's so interesting that I really learned how to do that for me. And I was embodying that energy of being fully safe and seen with myself and starting to, I really have gotten there in a couple of close friendships that I have. And so then I magnetize a man that can do that. And who knows if it's going to go anywhere. I really don't, I, I'm really not attached to any outcome. I just really enjoyed the experience and it was just so powerful and healing for me to because I've never felt like I could fully relax and trust and open up with a man before like completely like fully be in my feminine energy which is a receiving trusting relaxed energy because they were never capable obviously especially my ex-boyfriend sweet human super sweet but he was very unemotionally available to himself and was very overwhelmed by and intimidated by and avoidant towards me when I needed emotional support because uh, he, he just didn't have capacity he didn't have it for himself so how could he do it for me and he knew that and he apologized for it like he he's a great guy but it just it made me I've always had to like hold on to control with men because I've not been able to fully relax and receive and trust because they just weren't capable you know they weren't able to actually hold me and be there for me and so I'm learning how to relax and trust and receive on a whole new level but like I could have never predicted that I needed that experience 
to be able to have the truly intimate, amazing, healthy, spiritual connection with the life partner I'm calling in that I want, you know? So it's just, it's very, it's very uh, interesting and cool to see the way the universe just guides you and leads you. And so it's so important to really keep track of these things that are happening so you see, you stay in flow, you see, you receive, and you it helps so much with staying in belief. It helps reshape your beliefs because you are constantly being hit in the face with the fact that the universe has your back and everything is working out and you magnetize good things and then you believe that more and then you feel better and then you attract more of it and then you believe it even more. It's just this like positive upward spiral to be honest. And so writing down and keeping track of all the things that you are manifesting is so, so powerful for so many reasons. That was quite a tangent there for thing one with like the little freebie thing too. But it's, I think, just such a powerful, powerful practice and one that really grounds me whenever I get triggered or just am, yeah, having a bit of a moment, which I shared on my stories. I was having a moment because I was tasting some next level things and like kind of in the vicinity and it triggered me because I was like, well, why am I not here yet? And why aren't they fully coming? And like, it put me in scarcity and put me into like, oh no, it's not working. I'm blocking myself in some way. Why maybe these things will never happen. Like there was all these like fears and triggers that came up for me. And I was in that energy of lack then from that happening. But then I talked to a friend because support's really important too. But then I also went back and I looked at my list and I was like, oh my God, like I have manifested so much in the past four months. I've leveled up so much, like just since November just since November and it's wild. And so it just, it helped put me back into faith and abundance and trust, which then also helps you feel regulated and just, wow. Like I feel, I was able to just like, whew, relax again. <laughs> I felt relieved. I felt my just anxious triggered state start to stabilize. Uh, it just, it helps our thoughts really play a pivotal role in nervous system regulation. Uh, Cause a lot of our triggers start with thoughts. Our triggers are coming from the thoughts we think about the things that are happening in our life. So I hope I convinced you to start writing down what you wanna manifest and what you are manifesting. And then thing number two is kind of connected to that, doing your healing work on a regular basis. And obviously sometimes it's more deep and intense if you haven't, if you're newer to doing like anything related to processing trauma or neutralizing triggers or whatever like it can be a lot and heavy and overwhelming and like take it at a pace that feels comfortable for you but I try to do you know we're always going to I think experience I don't know I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a potential reality where I never experience triggers and I just don't know that that's going to exist but I know how to hold myself through my triggers and I know how to heal anything that's coming up for myself and I actually dove into this in my last solo episode, what to do when you're feeling wobbly and doing this process regularly. It's called being emotional. I call it being emotionally available to yourself and having a secure attachment to and relationship with yourself. It is, it just keeps me clear because things are going to happen. Like it's life. Life is not going to be perfect or a cakewalk all the time. It has gotten much easier and smoother and higher vibe continually for me the more I've done this work and the more I've learned how to manifest, it's great, but still things happen. You know, even if it's as silly as yesterday, I was coming into the city and I, the parking garage that I normally park at was completely full, which never happens. And I, it took me a while to find where to park. And then I was like, crap, I'm going to be late. I was early. Now I'm going to be late for this event. And I get in my Uber then. And cause I parked in Jersey city and I get in my Uber and the Holland tunnel, the whole lane that we're queued up for is like stopped dead standstill and the next one's fine and I, you really aren't supposed to cut over and I was stressing out and then they ended up moving a cone and letting and I we were one of the first cars lined up and I was able to like go through and go in and it all worked out fine I got there just in time as the brand experts were starting to speak but I was triggered and I was like starting to spiral and believe those lies of like bad things are going to happen essentially, right? Like I'm going to be late and then the brand and the PR firm are going to never invite me to an event again. And I might never get to work with that brand again. And uh, that means I'm not going to make enough money to survive. And then I like, you know, I'm going to be in scares. Like, you know, the whole stupid spiral that we go down, like we assign so much meaning to like a tunnel 
was blocked. It was just a tunnel that was blocked. And I went down <laughs> a whole rabbit hole into my future about how it was at, like the end of my life, essentially. And it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's so funny looking back on, but I was able to, after I was kind of triggered for about 10, 15 minutes, I was like, okay, I am supported. What's coming up? I, I let myself talk through with myself. Okay. What well, all, all these thoughts, all these thoughts, all these emotions that were coming up that were triggering me. And I was like, okay, well, these aren't true. It's all going to work out. If I'm late and I never work with the brand again and the PR hates me, that'll be sad. But I have multiple streams of income. So I'm not going to be homeless and on the streets and not be able to feed my cat. There's lots of other PR firms. There's lots of other brands and people are understanding. And I emailed them ahead of time, letting them know what happened. And they responded right away, logically pulling myself out of holding myself in the emotions. I mean, I walk you through step by step in that episode. So I'm not going to like go through it again right now, but I did my process where I like, I held myself, I validated myself, I expressed my feelings, I processed them, and then I was able to shift out of them. And having this be a practice, a thing that I do regularly, it keeps me in a regulated state. Because if I had not done that and I went to that event, I would have been in a heightened state of anxiety. I would have been definitely hyper, because I'm hyper aware a lot of times still from trauma in my childhood of people's like facial expressions, like constantly looking out for danger because it was so emotionally chaotic and traumatic for me for so many years. So I was constantly hypervigilant looking for that's that's what it's called hypervigilance. And I was constantly having to be on on guard should there be an explosion and of like anger or whatever, like to protect myself and to create safety for myself. So I when I'm triggered, that's kind of my autopilot where I'm like hyper aware of what other people are doing and saying and just to pro- again, look out for find prevent protect myself from danger. But it's just a horrible it's it's like kind of like a fight or flight, almost in in fight or flight. And it's so hard to connect. And it's definitely not an abundant magnetic energy. I would have been like on guard, hard to conversate, probably not connecting with people in my own head, just disconnected from the event. I wouldn't have been able to show up. And I ended up, I ended up connecting with several great people. One of the girls might come on the podcast. It was just such an amazing experience at the event. And I wouldn't have been able to have that happen should I not have done this processing that I did in the car to get myself regulated again. And you get good at this through practice. And so I guess that's kind of what I mean by like getting good at your healing work. It neutralizes past triggers when you do this because you start to anytime these things happen again, you're like, oh, well, it was fine last time. So it's probably going to be fine again. So you're less triggered when things go wrong or things happen. And it just keeps you in a really good magnetic state so much more of the time, which you manifest so much better from. Okay. Thing number three that I do is I am on a strict mental diet, guys. I I really don't believe in physical diets anymore. You guys know I had an eating disorder. I, I need to share my story on here soon. Some of you guys know. I just, yeah, it depends on where you followed me and for how long. But if you don't know, I had a really bad eating disorder in, when I was like 18 to like 23, 17, 17 to 23. It was like in there. And I just don't vibe well with, I don't vibe well with restriction in any area of my life. Let's be real. <laughs> I don't believe in it. I believe we can have it all. I believe in having it all and being extremely abundant and having overflow. It's so cool. I'm like entering this. This is an Amanda Francis term. I don't want to steal it. Um, Amanda Francis was, if you want more manifestation teachers, uh, she is great and was a huge influence for me in my healing and mindset rewiring journey. She talks a lot about wealth and money and money mindset, but she has this term called overflow. And I feel like I'm entering that in my life where it's like I, especially with men right now, I hope none of the guys I'm dating are listening to this. (laughs) That's fine if they are. I have had so many amazing men in my life recently, just like amazing dates, like people being so just amazing to me. I've had amazing experiences, like so many. And I'm like, oh my God, like I can't, I don't have time to go out with all these people on a regular basis. I've had a lot of great first dates recently. And I feel just as with friends, with love, with giftings, with opportunities, with events, with fun, with food. I've been so wined and dined. I love whining and dining. 